No grenades to speak of on the CT side chat. So, uh, okay. we'll see what they can make of it. All right, well, they had a similar fate over there on Inferno, I do believe. Let's see if they can net themselves a couple of tidy shots as Halzerk is going to dismount down onto the top of the hut. Great position for those dual Berettas. Smoke lobbed out of the hands of Glaive, and the 1x bet odds heavily favoring the Danes here. A bit of a lurky boy to work around. Going to obscure the vision of that main player as well as the windows ever so slightly. Yo. And Config's been peppered down to two. So he's on notice. Okay, then. We are off to the races. Astralis with the control right now. They have the lower bomb set under their remit. Yet to plant, but uh, I'm sure it'll be coming momentarily. Zipex, the player with the bomb on his back. As it is by their time. They don't want to rush anything here. There's still a player down towards lower. The rotation's coming through. There's Blame Afto who takes the dual Berettas out of the hands of top. Al Zerk. And indeed, they're actually changing this round completely. Towards upper we go. And this is going to be a massive issue for Grim and Co. Oh, that is a huge problem. And now these dual Berettas in enemy hands can just lock down this key choke point. There's no way back in right. towards the ramp room. Blame F executing, looking for the fourth. And he's going to get it. Give the big man the ace. Farley is going to steal it. And that is a fantastic round from Astralis to kick things off. Very controlled. I have to say that towards Lower. They didn't rush the plant. They didn't force the issue. They managed to get together, hunt for information, realize the CT's already made their way down towards Lower. And once again, they keep frag towards the hut. Blame, of course, for everyone to get back up. And then he's just fending them off on the rotation here towards ramp, mowing them down. And uh, this is probably the best sequence we've seen with the dual Berettas in this, this event this so is far. This a submission? You put yeah. that one in? That's the official yeah. submission? All the dual Berettas so far, probably, I think that's the best one so far. Well, we could task Maui and, and Blair with going through and watching all of the dual Beretta highlights. I would, I would appreciate that, to be honest, if they've got the time. Hey, well, they, they do. They do have the time. I would really like to know. For me, that's the best one yet. But uh, it is going to be a just talking season 16. We exactly. don't want any. That's we don't it. want that's, any that's other. All. We that's don't want any other crazy. clips coming, guys. We've all seen a clip or two, but we want submissions only from uh, ESL Pro League season 16, which is XVI uh, from Romans. We covered off for them last week. We'll cover off for them again this week. We need to make sure we're worrying it's, about it's everybody. It's good to keep the Romans happy. Well, we know that what happens when they're not happy, right. Henry. <laughs> we'll see what happens when the Romans aren't happy. And oh, a happy chappy is blamed. Initiating this top side swing through the smoke. Two will fall and it is floppy from the top rope. Let's see what he can get done. The tag of the flames is good for one. The trade is there. And, oh, hang on. He has been overlooked here. He's got the AK-47 as well and too many players oh. to deal with. He's overwhelmed, but Halser might get the headshot here. Is it? Oh. Oh. That's absolutely massive. He steps up and the round looks like it's completely over and steals it away. We go 1-1. One, one out of nowhere. Okay, the low HP, didn't think it would come into play, but the scout shot, shot, and shot. The last being the hardest, the difficulty level there through the roof, but this is what they want from Halzo. The first two short, they're slightly peppered up, but just peering out the head over the top of the box. Blame, sit down, because Halzo is here to party. My word. Gosh. What a turnaround that is. You can see what it means to the boys. They have no chance to win that round. It felt like it was completely over. The first three kills going in favor of Astralis. They're down to the Deagles now. Everything to play for. Wow. Nice round. That's going to start the uh, energy early here on the CT Hall. Smokes are being lined up here now. Well, we do have a, a brief moment. Hauser goes with Berserk quite nicely, but we have Config who has been labeled as the Berserker. And okay. uh, Blame is the Boulder. It's the uh, immovable object and the unstoppable force on the same team. Yeah, that's a difficult predicament to find yourself in. But uh, they did get shut down. That was very impressive from Halzerk. And we'll see if he can continue that trend here. Test it. Nope. The AK-47. Need to be careful here, Fang. Keep it clean. You can't go down as well. Well, you might do. They're swarming him now. Towards credit card at the same time. And luckily, he doesn't take any damage. But uh, you can see the Deagle is still a bit of a nuisance here. Lobby trying to answer back, but the smoke will remove his vision for now. Scrambling now, the CTs. This is the issue while they try and deal with... Oh! There he comes again, the Grim Reaper. These bloody deagles, they're, they're not going to get away from these, are they? They're just scampering. Still they're a trying chance. to get some real estate. Sure, Fang is the only one that can put up a fight, but the bomb is down. Time is of the essence. <sighs> this might be the shot. Back of the head with the deagle right here into the vent. Grim on notice. I think they should consider the save here. How's Grim meant to get out of this? He's slinked in towards the decon door. Sure. Fang's also pressing forward. Fang, he can take a fight here. That is an essential kill on the Glaive. Starting to initiate now. Grim, no kit for this. 
He's tapped the bomb. Halfway gone. Swings out cold clear, but still just one player to find. They have to not blame off. They have to get blame done now. I don't think there's going to be time to defuse here. He's done enough. Blame's done more than enough. The kills are beautiful work. Seven to one for blame in the early stages. There's the kit. The kit watcher, J-Raz, out looking for birds. Well, there it is. It was another beautiful Desert Eagle sequence coming in from Astralis. Convict opening things up towards main entrance. Zipex actually found Alzerk. Low HP towards Secret. Right. This was a shot that really right. pulled him into the round. Very nice towards JT there. Ali with a lovely one as well. There was a decent effort of the retake. Comes down to the two on one, but as you mentioned, no kit. Blame F in position just to mow them down. And you can see that's a frustrating finish considering they had to fight so hard with that scout to even get into this round. Three kills required. And uh, they'll buy back into it. The Eagles of their own and uh, an M4 for Grim. Now he's uh, chipped in here. He said Zywu had a better Julie's round in Group A. He keeps mentioning about we that one the, round. We want it officially clipped. He's obsessed with that one we round. We need it clipped. We need uh, we need a comparison. I don't think it was that good. Well, look, I want to see the round. I want to be able to compare the pair. I've seen it. I've had a, I've had my own analysis. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? No. Not interested. So Maui, uh, we would like a little bit more uh, if you could. Dining out on that one kill from Zywu. And Blair is spitting in the face of Julie users everywhere. Well, what's that? Ain't no one got time for Julie clips. We're not Moses. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. He's throwing, <laughs> is Moses like the Julie? <laughs> he's throwing hands right now, Blair. Is that a, is that a thing Jason's known for? I do, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm really not sure. But this round, well, we had some investment, sure. Unless Halzerk can get a one on four with the USP. He did a one on three. Dun, 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 I think dun, dun, that means it's copyrighted chat. We have to be careful with that one. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Apologize to the, the movie companies out there. But uh, there we have it. Come and get me. <laughs> I'm sure they will, to be honest. Uh, three to one. And <laughs> we do have presumably an eco coming up here. And uh, that was the kill through the smoke to drop down from main entrance. Let's see what it means. He's happy with that. He can't believe his luck. I just keep shooting smoke and they keep going down. I can't believe it. But uh, full eco now for Complexity. Now, one round they did win. Hasn't meant too much, I'm afraid. It's going to be 4-1 to kick things off. Well, four of them on the base of the site here. You at home, have your vote now. How many kills do you think the USPs are going to get? Type in chat numbers one, actually zero to five. We don't want to limit you here. Maybe you don't think they're going to get any kills at all. You never know. There's always a chance. Three-man stack towards the ace silos. Player towards the CT vents as well. Blame F already in the vents. Just going through the motions here. Hoping to dissect the lower bomb site in terms of presence. Of course, nothing really down there for the CTs. Hmm. Okay, well, here we can go. Can maybe get an AK out of this, though? It's just Glaive. the blender, Henry. Hold up. No, I feel like I'm Glaive... Just it in. I'm locked the blender I feel in. like Glaive just gets one here. Oh. Okay, all right. What about now? Now he, won't even, he doesn't even have to get kills. He knows he's done enough. He's just going to send them back in. Come get me, lads. Now the blender's been set up. Catch me if you can. It's whirring into action here. He knows it as well. And we're off to the race, ladies and gentlemen. Can he find multiple frags? There's three. Two and a half, actually. It's stuck on a frozen strawberry. It absolutely did, and that's going to be an AK-47 safe. That's that's actually quite valuable, I would say, on the CT side. Take out towards ramp, or maybe towards the upper bomb site, and you'll have yourself some very favorable jewels. But uh, that's about all they get. The round is by the wayside. As Stratus will post their fourth on the T side of Nuke. Certainly the favorites coming into this matchup, and uh, I've taken their opponent's map pick of Inferno. In a quite a convincing manner, they're in very good stead to do the same here. Well, we have to shout out to a couple people in uh, in chat. Honey95, uh, D Wheeling, uh, who else we got here? Halo Evolved. These are just some individuals who guessed one for the USP. Nice. So uh, congratulations to them. You guys have won the grand prize of nothing. Uh, but thank you for participating <laughs> today. <laughs> it's a good prize. So I would say one of the first real gun rounds. Fair enough. So it's going to be JT with the AK. We get into it. I would say a must win around for Complexity now. Can't let this one spiral out of control. Orb heads towards ramp to kick things off, and uh, some outside grenades will come through. The Galil, oof, Zipex actually follows that grenade home. It's a lot of damage. This is where, yeah, you, you bang on. We need to see if there's any fire, anything in the tank here. If they're unable to convert a round like this, oh, the spam not far off either, then there is going to be some massive issues. And how's it currently tunneling down towards the lower side of things? 
Seeing if you can find a pick with that AWP. Tasked with a whole lot of real estate, but Astralis don't have any presence towards Yard whatsoever. Another squeaky door smoke will plume. There's two more left on the ball, one for Fang, one for Halzo, but he's removed from the picture here and kind of giving Complexity enough rope to hang themselves. The more utility they use, the more susceptible they will be to a top execute. Still plenty of bottles of flames, still plenty of smokes and flashes, so Glaive can call them into place now. Yeah, no incendiaries to speak of on the CT side, so it'll be very difficult to tie up those choke points. Glaive probing towards that side on his lonesome, just suggesting there's a presence towards this area. Hmm. Alzok still towards Secret, bear in mind, of the AWP as well, so they haven't got full control of the outer area. Very late on the final smoke here, so I think they're going to try and... They're just suggesting. Yeah, but it, it's just so late on that that I, I guess it needs to be respected, but Halzerk's here, so he knows that there's nobody down lower. Here we go, the upper pop will come through. It's up to Grim on top of that hut to do considerable damage. It will be required here, but no kills found so far. Who will open things up? It's going to be Config, JT to chime in as well. Remember, Grim's still on top of the hut, yet to be detected, and here he comes, looking for multiple kills here. He will find them. It's still going to be a one versus one. Ali versus Holzerk, but he comes up towards the vent with the AWP. Eight wow. seconds remaining, has to go for the plant, and that means he can encroach in his position, but it's going to be close range AWP, and I think he's got it. There's no way Ali could know. Oh, we'll oh, spot him though, oh. surely he spots him. He's the leg, he, surely one of the teammates on the leg. Ali now, he knows what the player is. Holzerk on the side, up close and personal, but wow, more than enough chances there to course correct. A close one. I think there was a couple of unforced errors there from Astralis because Grim was on top of the hut. I said there was plenty of bottles of flame. There was no molly top hut. It must have missed. It must have done. I have no idea. Um, he was absolutely fine. They didn't even check that position to the uh, final fleeting moments of that round. And here's the replay because no one's even checking it. Yeah, that's they why out. they either threw the molly that doesn't spill to that side of the hut or the molly missed altogether. I didn't see it burning when they were coming out squeaky. So I assume an unforced error there. Damn, good shot from Alzerk as well to close that one out. Stressful. He's contributed for both rounds that they've converted here. Both have been Hauser clutches. Yeah, that's very good point. A one versus three and a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's going to be Blame F forcing the issue here towards Upper. JT will get the kill uh -huh. through the smoke. That's towards Squeaky Door, and once again, it's Grim on top of the hub. Being an absolute nuisance here, but Config ducking and diving around the bomb side brings it back to a three-on-three. -three. Smoke towards Main. Bang. Nothing he can do for now. The bomb should be planted momentarily, but a spam can come through towards main entrance as the bomb is planted, default plan. And the retake will be difficult. They've got a couple of flashes, an incendiary. If they throw it on Convict's position, they're onto something. Another smoke towards main is going to buy even more time here. That one's a bad Best throw. Smoke, though. Yeah, it's got a big gap on the left-hand side here for Fang to work with, and Farley might just offer himself up. He's realized that there's a gap right now. Fang flirting with coming through, making himself seem bigger than he is. That flash forward, they're blind, they're coming out. Heaven off of that flop, he's been able to profit. Fang's found one as well. This is a good retake. They drop down on just enough HP. They will scoop up the kit, and they will definitely get the defuse, but well handled there. That flash from Fang, you could see it. It came in from main, zipped in the site, blind. He goes down as the first prong of the retake. So well handled from Complexity. That's a really nice little put together round. Absolutely true. And you can see how blind they were, scrambling to find cover. And this thrown smoke towards main allows them to get the kill towards Farley as well. And it will be four to three. They're coming to life in this second map and they'll have a nice full buy here as well. Fang with the AK-47. Haven't had to say his name too often. Uh, hasn't had any big moments so far in the series, but uh, still plenty of time as we enter round number eight. The Mac turns out once again, but just one of them this time in the hands of Glaive. And the orb for Farley as he'll make his way towards outside, I'm sure. So this is some of the adjustments that Astralis had to make when they made these roster changes, right? They brought in Blame, and he was doing a lot of these lurky roles towards Yard. In complexity, when he was on the international team, he'd get a lot of yard space, they'd use a lot of resources, and then he'd kind of just park the bus and hope that his teammates would, would be able to get some kills. Glaive is a bit more proactive. So there's been a lot of changes for Astralis in how they use these players, the roles that they play, and they're definitely starting to get them into a better form. But Fang right now, you wanted a big moment. This is his chance. Two, locked out. The molly comes. Three for Fang, just biting down hard. And the fourth is there. Beautiful stuff from the Canadian. Well, there we have it, Jad. I wanted a big play from him, and he certainly delivers on all fronts. That is massive. He manages to get four, and he's on for the ace here as well. The bomb's down towards Secret, and we'll see whether he can convert this one. Certainly fancies he can't blame him. Speaking of blame, that's going to be him on the other side, and there it is. That's going to be a, a highlight moment for him, for sure. That's absolutely fantastic. Perfectly positioned, and uh, just as I call him out as well, he delivers on all fronts. Snappy stuff there, wasn't it? And a big smile on his face. You'd love to see it. And there will be lost bonus plus the plant blame can buy. And you understand why they want to do this. They want to try and keep the economy humbled. So expect something a bit slower before this AK starts to prod. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not slower at all. Maybe actually quite in your face. He's just going to swing. This nade, it's deep. Oh, not deep enough. It's the corner of the wall there. 
do a whole lot. And Floppy, what? Well, hold on to your hat, mate. You, you're about to lose it. They're just running out into your domain. You don't look ready at all. Completely caught off guard. Well, there we have it. Yeah. Well, he didn't know they were coming. He he spotted them as well, right? Multiple times. Yeah. Well, there we have it. It is going to be an opening frag for Astralis. And what a part of the map they've taken over as well. The portal to both bomb sites there. It means you have to drop someone down towards lower. That's going to be Fang this time with the AK-47. He sits behind the bomb site itself. Alzerk should have a frag here, and indeed he does. Glaive will be dropped. It's up to Zipex. Move the M4. Ooh, I think they spotted one. probably spotted him. They know he's there. Yeah, this is perfectly placed. He'll have to extinguish. Dancing through the flames. Come on, Fang. He can do this. He can actually pull this one off, I dare say. He's low HP now, and he's done enough, I suppose, considering he was spotted. This Deagle kill is everything. Config needs to work out whether it's worth trying to pick up the rifle, but down to the two-on-two. -two. JT closes the door. Huge advantage here for Complexity. As both Astralis players now on the window side. Ali needs to go around the world. He needs to try and locate that drop rifle. That's going to be the only way in, because Zip, sure, he's got this gun in his hands, but he can't do this alone. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Of course, they have kits, but no smokes to throw on top of the bomb here, so the rifle will be recovered. A chance is. Zipex makes himself known from the window. Hello. Swings it open, and there it is. The rifle, it's done everything and more, and it has to be said, Chad, that play towards ramp from Floppy has led them to this detrimental situation. Getting nothing there, not surviving. The key of ramp, if you are overwhelmed, you drop down towards low. You don't need any kills, you just need to survive. He spots them, and I assume he thought he was up against an eco, perhaps, and wanted to stay a bit longer. He had no backup, he had no utility. He offers up a rifle, and yeah, the blame has to be put on him for this particular round, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, a, it's a too big of a part of the map to just give over against this yeah. type of a buy. And then all that pressure just constantly applied here. And then Farley made the best play he could. He knew he had a Glock, he knew he was on half HP, kind of sniffed them out there and confirmed the round. So good job for him and Zip to close things down. Just when Complexity were looking very comfortable. They managed to get themselves four rounds, what, three rounds in a row. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to put them in a quite uh, difficult spot. The MP9 for JT. All for Halzik, though, looking active and quite precise so far, I have to say. This is looking very good. He can hold this position. He might be onto something. We'll see. It's a bit of a standstill for now. And they're going towards outside with the bomb. The only unknown, I suppose, is blame at this juncture. The unsilenced M4 may be not as tidy to spam through these smokes. So Fang needs to be very careful that bullets don't come back his way. Been able to flash Glaive to get this secret control. And JT's playing just looking through this slither gap with a smoke deployed as soon as he takes any action. But Blame is really in a rough spot, but he is aware that the lobby push is possible. Well, that smoke. Secret push, and that's good. They can now start worrying and try and throw more aim map smoke. They're throwing one towards the windows. They smoked off towards main. They want to fight towards heaven and hell here. Well, they might just get those fights. Bang, isolated behind the windows. Convict. He's well up for a fight. He'll be sending it towards the heaven position, leading the charge here. Bang. He's ready and waiting. So is Floppy. Licking their wounds from the previous round, but still have enough to fight back here. He's going to flash this. Oh, this could be nice. Floppy is in sort of an anti-flash position, not anymore. Oh, no! He catches a face full of it. The flashbang and the ledge. Bang beneath him. Grim needs a double kill. Not going to happen. But Hauser, remember, he's been here the entirety of this round. Ten seconds remaining, Chad. This is the kill that really matters. Oh. And where is Fang? He is nowhere to be seen. The bomb will be planted. There was a chance there for sure. Good positioning, but ultimately... This round will slip by. It's it going looks to be just so one. good because Blaine yeah. was disconnected. He couldn't assist. He still did get a kill during all of this. So I don't know. I, I, I love the play from Yard because as soon as they apply the pressure towards Secret and that smoke gets dropped, you understand that there's definitely a player under and that you can now start applying pressure towards Heaven and Hell because that's one of the areas that you lose that member, right? You, you have to rotate that, that player somewhere else. And Halzerk was in lobby for a lot of this, so he couldn't even lock down a key position where the AWP really reigned supreme. So that was a, an unfortunate positioning for complexity in this round. It looked so good at the start because he got prime real estate, right? He's holding towards squeaky door. He's looking towards lobby, but they go outside and they're just fending off that area, smoking him out of the round. A chance with 10 seconds if he hits the second shot, but uh, wasn't meant to be. We'll have a look at convict position here. As you mentioned, oh, yeah. flashed in by Glaive. The perfect flash. He just eats it. Nothing can be done. Floppy tries to retreat, but uh, you can see the frustration from Halzerk there, knowing he had a prime spot, one they can't convert, and it will be six to four with an eco coming in here. Fang saves an M4. He purchases just a single flashbang, and uh, they can't really justify much else, Chad. No armor, no real upgraded pistols. 
Groom will bring out a P250, but it's Bali with the maximum control. I like this boost, though. Don't see this too often. Oh, this is very unusual. So, yeah. curious to see what he's able to find Actually, here. Really like this. Head's very tucked away. It's definitely not a pre-aim of any variety. I don't think it'll net anything. Yeah, it's at least it's something now. to be excited about, right? So, oh, hang on. That's the bomb. And that's Zipex coming out of the hut. Who is your favorite? Who would you say is your favorite complexity member of all time? Henry? We have a lot of names here. Oh, a lot of names. Fraud, probably. Okay, you really want to rock it old school. <laughs> yeah, was that not allowed? Oh, you can. No, that's no, no, no. I thought you maybe in that case would have gone with like maybe a trip or a Sunman. But you I went did, with, you I went did with like, fraud. I did like trip. Do you know what? At CGS as well, Sunman. Mm -hmm. I used his config for the entirety of the event. I played really well. That was uh, that was something of a memory for me from Sunman. Yeah, they were they were always fun to watch, right? Uh, I did that, like trip as well. He was uh, like uh, the in-game leader's favorite in-game leader. You know? Okay, I see yeah. what you've done there. We've got a, I'm looking at all these different names here. There was a team with Method and Volcano and De Bears at one point for complexity. They had a 1.6 uh, Brazilian team towards the end. How's that dead? Uh, with FNX, Fallen, Knack, Bruno, names that people at home would know. Remember towards the tail end, works. Jason Lake picked up a, yeah. a... And then we had obviously the, the Source version during um, the CGS days, which was they had Fraud Storm, Warden, Rambo, uh, Sunman. So a bunch of names in the mix there. Zet, remember he Zet. Yeah, played Swedish too. player, right? What? A few a standard chance, I would say, against the powerhouse of Astralis here. We will see Fang and Co defending towards Upper. Utility is exchanged, no gaps to be found, and Bali's in front of the bullets as well. Grim will be dropped through a, a Wolbang smoke shot there. So are they going back towards ramp as well? Wolzerk will be ready and waiting. He has no idea they've slipped through though. Might not matter. Need to drop down now. This is where you want to escape. He's got help coming, so maybe he wants to stand and fight here with a teammate. Fang's starting to swoop in as well and just beelining straight for this position, but a defensive smoke. Look at this play. Lame trying to buy himself some time, a safety raft of sorts. Glaive, an absolute nuisance here. He knows that two players rotated to ramp. He knows that he can start to take some territory back. Config, Farley, and Glaive to break the hearts of complexity here. Oh, the timing is going to be so miserable. Glaive's going to come up and just pip him. Bosh. Yep. That one. On the handrail as well. Advantageous angle. Players down towards lower. Just JT defending now. And that should be all she wrote uh, for round number 12. Both players down and lower. That's floppy and fang. They don't stand a chance. I kind of want Blair's prediction of 16 8 to be correct because Maui was a bit sassy. I don't know if you call that towards the tail end of that segment. A bit, a bit of sass out of Maui there. I thought, you know, they were the night shift. I thought they were brothers in arms. I thought they had this collective where everybody was mates, but it, it seemed a little bit rocky over there. So maybe not all sunny for the night shift. And it's definitely not that way for complexity. Now, if you're worrying about the later fixture today, we do have Ents taking on Heat. And I think everybody is going to be tuning in to watch the new Ents roster in the server, the additions of Valda and some Pius. Very exciting to see in lieu of Sphinx and Hades. And then we also have Heat, which is featuring uh, one of... Everyone's favorite XG2 members, Jax. You know, a lot of people like Jax, he's a happy lad. He is, it's good to see him back. And uh, Body's back as well. He's won a Pro League season and he's back. That is a blast in the past, isn't yeah, it? Body under G2. Is yeah, absolutely. Everyone's got so many good words to say about Jax and I think that's fair enough. He always just talk about his attitude and uh, in the, the face of desperate scenes, he's always uh, managing to bring up morale and do great work. So uh, yeah, looking forward to see his return. And uh, who we have in chat, things getting a bit desperate over here as well, the complexity. They've lost the half now on the CT side of Nuke. Already a map down and uh, got a full center towards outside. Three players here ready for battle, but uh, I dare say they are going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, Grim, he might be able to get the third here. This would be a big kill, but can't quite connect him. It's still an even kill. Yeah, didn't really favor Farley's chances there. So. An Equal exchange just means this mid-round is the most curious. If Zip wins the fight over towards ramp here against that of Floppy, that's an avenue to get that bomb down. So this duel for Floppy is a very important one here. And as against Zip, he will win it. That's an important test to pass. Now, I'm going to try and pivot down the vent here. You can see Blame flirting with the idea of coming out this squeaky on the fade. I'm going to creep forward, try and isolate a fight or two. But down the vent to lower, I'm not... Obviously, they're not to know, but it's the best call they can make here. They're looking for a boost of some variety, just kind of parked in front of each other here. There's the boost. Okay. The upper side is looking clearer and clearer, but it's all the ruse. Now back of the side, spot of the CT vent swings. It's grim to eliminate that of blame. And now Farley knows that he can go down the fireman's pole. He's a quick escape here. He might be able to get a plant out of this, but I'd say that's about it. 
You say that, Chad, but there's always a chance. Give him the beans, Hank. We'll see what he can do with this one. The AWP lines up towards ramp, and he's got players all around him at this point. Time is of the essence. He to tuck himself in. He's got a couple of flashbangs to work with here. The first shot will be successful. Can he make the second? He absolutely can. Down to the one versus one, and the AWP at range could be the best weapon for the job. Floppy. We'll shut him down, Chad, but we had a moment there. We gave him the beans. We gave him the beans. We always want to give him the beans. Absolutely true. There was a chance, and uh, one he almost realized, but uh, it wasn't meant to be significant financial damage to the defensives there of complexity. They only have one player surviving. They recover the orb, but uh, there'll be compromises to be made going into round number 14. That was exciting, to say the very least. I can't believe we got two there towards a single door position. Yeah, it feels like it should get one and traded almost immediately, doesn't it? So a real opportunity. The first one was How another wasn't one it of backflip crazy. Kind of reaction shots and oh, it was. Yeah, the landing. kind of painting a picture around him with those bullets. So <laughs> lucky for Mr. Floppy. And He's yeah, the yeah. Off. you know how that feels, though. I can sympathize with JT in that situation. <laughs> the monitor was always flung oh, out of the arena. Facial expressions said it all. <laughs> How's it? Uh, yep, well, it happened. You should have hit it, but uh, you didn't. It's unfortunate. We still won the round, though. That's so. like every round of Counter Strike <laughs> I play. <laughs> it's a good idea. So. Like we said, compromises to be made for complexity. Sure, they won the previous one, but at what cost? Three versus one, quickly. Almost spiraled out of control. Round 14. Smoke's deployed outside momentarily. Willingness to recover the other one. Okay, no utility required here. Floppy has been uh, pantsed a couple of times now in round. He has been getting bullied ever so slightly here. A defensive smoke to stall out this secret crawl is the best thing I have to report right now, because from above, Config will strike Fang in the dirt, and that saved AWP as well. They didn't get into a bomb site, and they have all five kills, all five staying <laughs> alive. This is um, not looking good. This no. is uh, likely 10-5 half. Yeah, I think the operative word there, bullying, that round encapsulates it, right? The fact that it's walking into significant choke points, very difficult angles, like the ramp room, helping yourself to a kill there, that's never good news, not a good feeling, and uh, it provokes a reaction, right? The CTs have to reclaim territory. They can't let really have ramp for free and go towards lower. They push them towards the lobby, and they are completely mowed down. MP9s are for masses, and maybe an upper rush here, as we'll see Astrala set up towards the lobby. Smokes will enable a drop down towards the vents, and there it is, an equal trade for now. They'll find an AK-47, but Glaive can hear them running around, scampering in towards that lobby, and I guess they might have a couple of kills here. Flame's still activated, though. He's gotten down the vent during all of this. He needs to be most worried about Fang. He doesn't realize... Oh, actually, he should realize now, because he's just heard that smoke, Henry. As he comes around the corner here, Mr. Blame should be... Oh, not good for the kill. Uh-oh. The MP9 strategy, it's a matchmaking classic. It might pay off. It's just one man remaining. It's Farley. Do you want another crack at the one on three? I can give it another go. <laughs> if he gets close to a bomb, so we'll, we'll get into it. This one's harder to win, I imagine. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to need about 30 seconds to uh, build up to it. So okay. we'll see what it can do. So, Farley now. Presumably this one out of his remit. Out of his reach. AWP in hand, and well, that's going to be it. I'm glad I did give that time to <laughs> two players of armor and dual Berettas in hand. It's a fast approach from Complexity. They head towards outside, and uh, they need this one, Chad. They need this desperately. And they have one smoke. A similar approach what we saw from Astralis, to be honest with you. That's that single smoke crossing over towards Secra, but it's Zipex. No stranger to the ramp from himself, and uh, he'll be opening up the killing towards Floppy. Here come the dual Berettas, though. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Glade mowing them down there. Another one for the scrap. Book, put it in there. Send that wow. one to Maui. Weigh it up against the Zywoo clip. Get him, I think get it's him better. Side by I think side. It, again, I think that one's even better than Zywoo clip. How many Zywoo out of clip can get out of game? here? That gets a, a, an 8 out of 10. <laughs> What's Zywoo, no man? one's talking about the Zywoo clip. <laughs> Just Maui. <laughs> Just Maui. <laughs> Just Maui and the poor Zywoo clip. But uh, I think Glaive's maybe, maybe taking, the, taking the cake now. He's that was brilliant. Two in, two in one map. That's where it makes sense, right? In the vents where it gets <laughs> real dirty down there. That's where it all comes together. <laughs> the events on the pistol. Ah, you love to see it. And it's going to be the full eco now. Complexity. We have nothing to work with. Glocks across the board. No upgrades, no armor. And if they get the bomb down, that's a victory in and of itself. So uh, we'll see what they can do. M4s. And a FAMAS. So they focused on the rifles here, Chad, preparing themselves for the AKs going forward. So you take uh, a few concessions with utility. You take a bit of a risk, I suppose. You could lose a couple of these rifles. But that's the way to play it. Spot them. Drop down and blame F. Won't be getting much more than one. So that's, that's unusual. Yeah, that looks like uh, that was all 
Oh, here's all day long. As they'll drop down. Of course, the rifle of low HP going first. Not great, but they actually could find another one here. Maybe not now. JT, there it is. So the fact they've got two kills, that, that's pretty decent. They came in with literally nothing. That's used correctly, that chat, literally. Yeah, not like the deaths to start. Hold on. Day. Hold on. JT, JT. See how much you've got to say about this because you're getting clamped down on from both sides. The MP9 of Hang on. Config, it's not good enough, but Clay, he has to do it all on his own right there. I can't believe how many casualties there were. That was Glocks. No managers, Glocks. but Glocks. <laughs> I'm going to call. Well, we're, we're, I got me, sorry. Sorry, sorry. You know, sorry. Right? I've been known to Wasn't, wasn't ready up. for it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're right. The fact it gets four kills in total, that is not ideal. As we mentioned, it's the full buy coming in now. So started with nothing, got a lot for it. A chance to even win that round. Glaive with a great shot there. Yeah, a wry smile, but uh, can they stay alive here? Convict, he's brought up the auto shotty. Oh, I like it. I do like it, the auto shotty. It's got some snap to it. I believe it was Hiko that made this a trend on Nuke many years ago, Chad, maybe before your time. That's even further back than what we've been going today. Jeez. I remember saying that in my early casting Valorant career. Valorant streamer. Yeah, exactly. Now that says a lot. Floppy's been able to find some space down the vent. I'm not sure if they would have heard his descent. He was quite noisy when his toes touched the tip. And this is a lot of yard space here as well. So completely negating the smoke wall with the positioning. Floppy is towards lower, but I, I don't think that's a concern. They have to return to A. I, I feel they have to return to A and try the vent drop. They've only got smoke and flashes, Henry. Coffee's going to eat him alive. Shotgun's hungry. Oh. But he does get wrecked. There it is. Quite a simple procedure in the end. Well, there was a chance of a big mow down. That's uh, not meant to be. Man advantage for complexity. Can they hold on to it, though? This is going to be it. Glaive steps out. The flash is good. Farley, he's going to eat that one. Both eyes as the trading onto the site. Efficient. And the other two individuals there are on the lower side of things. Blame and Zip well out of position here. Thought they had all the information they required, but I guess Floppy making them doubt this. The bomb will get planted. Very likely to see Complexity pick this one up. I don't imagine they even go for this round considering the finances here. I think you might be dead on. That, that previous round against just Glocks and nothing else has come back to bite them. Their money is going to be completely sabotaged, and it's all thanks to JT. So if they come back into this half, you can thank that round where they didn't even win it. So uh, we'll keep track of that for now, though. Astratus will be saving two rifles, both positioned towards the ramp room, and there doesn't seem to be a hunt going on just yet. So they will hold on to those. Another nice round there for complexity, though. It should be competitive at this stage, but uh, we'll see what Astralis decide to do going into the next. Uh, I would say they probably shouldn't buy into it. Well, the, the the quandary becomes, right, because your bottom of the barrel loss bonus. Yeah, you're right. right. So so if Blame can drop something and Zip as well. Right, I guess they could drop point, MP9s, right? Yeah, maybe they or want to get a scout for Farley. That, that's possible. I know it's Nuke, so I, I would be with you. I think more MP9s or, or maybe something you can get in the thick of it with. I think a scout can get zoned out quite easily. They've dropped the 5.7. That makes sense, right? We've seen already seen JDC's 5.7 today to shut out on Dust sick. 2 was nice. Yeah, fair play. Five Five sevens are making a huge comeback in 2022, I would say. And they haven't actually gone all in, right? So Farley still has 700, as the Orpa Blame still has 1,200. Okay. So they, they've kind of gone a little bit half-half. So next round, they will still, if they lose this, there'll still be a few investments made. Config's opted for the 5.7 instead of the Deagle, considering some of the shots he's been hitting. Surprised to see it. He's already through Squeaky. Floppy's about to be dead, mate. I don't think so. Floppy will bounce back. You sure? Because yeah. I don't think he's expecting this. The fade favors he'll, Config. He'll be fine. I know Floppy, Chad. He's never caught off guard. He's been caught off guard. Um, so there first it is. Time ever. The first time ever, actually. Yeah, it's actually unbelievable. But uh, Grim, oh, the angles are frustrating. Can't quite look down onto them. Still has a slight chance of getting this kill, but they're falling back. Was this in reverse? Well, I oh, think because we he's heard them rotate ramp. So he's called this rotation out and coming down the ladder. Grim needs to be very careful. Banks found one, JT the other. Everybody just rotating around the map, but the rifles are still alive. And Zip, he's done some damage here. Blame and Glaive, they have a chance. Oh, do they jump down the vents here? If they do, they'll be in a lot of trouble. Blame F patrolling towards main entrance. There's always the option to jump down the vents. And it hasn't quite landed, so I assume there's Molotoving squeaky door there. Still a chance. Blame F's got the kip. Glaive is up. Waiting for that smoke to dissipate. Enter the Fang and Grim here. They know exactly where they are now, towards the heart, and Glaive will start to flank around from the squeaky door. This could be big. This could be huge, but that's the key frag, and 
should calm thing down. Blame should just save at this point. Yeah, and they also only saw one player cross towards the hut, so they won't have an idea that both of them had been able to slink in towards that lobby position. So it was a competitive round from Astralis here. Everything almost fell apart. That info with Grimcoin then running towards Ramp, they were expecting that full rotation towards that lower site. It was a good idea to come back up from the lowers, but it still got quite dicey, so... Not out of the woods just yet on this T half by any means. It's still a three round game. It's another one converted in what should become nine rounds. So this is a chance for complexity to bring things ever closer. And that was the moment, a historic moment, where Floppy was indeed caught off guard. You can see the frustration starting to set in. He's had a bit of a rough game on Nuke, to be fair. Normally one of the shining stars of complexity, but Ramp has not worked out for him and then caught with uh, pants around the ankles once again. But they, they win the round. So uh, 11 to eight, as we'll see Blame F. As mentioned, save the M4. Just a few deagles to work with here. Say a few, just singular actually for Zipex. Now you you would have to say this should be a complexity round, but the next gun round is oh they're gonna. It's gonna say that looks like a nice boost. boost if they could look over. Yeah, that's not a bad shout, but uh, they opt against it. And there it is, floppy bouncing back. Ooh, Blames heard this. He knows there's one in warehouse. This is a very difficult position to maneuver here where Blame oh, is, right? Because <laughs> it's surrounded. You drop back, you know where the fight's coming from, you go forward, you walk into a fight. So that's the gun dealt. They know that the biggest weapon is on the floor now. It's this next gun round which is the key. If uh, Complexity are able to... Hold up a second, Blame. Uh, you've got to kill when you're in lobby and the AK not too far off from a third there. Did make me... stall for a moment and... still a chance for another fight here. It's a Zip Deagle. I'm not crazy concerned, but maybe Hang I should on. be. Um, <laughs> oh, maybe I really oh, should no, be. No, no, Howl's no, like got seven health. Like the eagle just needs to hit anywhere on the body. Anywhere like on this. the body. And oh, the third round with one shot left. Imagine. Imagine oh, the scenes. God, uh, there would be unspeakable. There would be unspeakable scenes. There'd be riots around Malta. These boys got to put their fists down. The next one of these complexity lads, I see raising a fist at anything. we got to take them outside, <laughs> put some gloves on, and they can punch a bag or something, boys. Good the frustrations. Grief. Well, it's an expensive one, but uh, fortunately they get through it. Wasn't even the cleanest round from Zipex. He's just spraying them down with the Deagle. Had the 1D come through then. Devastating, but uh, yeah, stop punching the monitors, boys. That's one of the rules. Not the monitors. Don't punch the monitors. We, we need those. Monitors. We need those to win. So, closing the gap. We have got a full by Astralis. With concessions again. No utility in terms of uh, diffuse kits. But the money low on both sides after taking heavy expenses in the previous complexity slow things down. This is different. They orb over towards ramp. So Good shot there as well. He's angle he's taken. That's a, a one and done drop down. Yeah, it is a bit of an odd one here. He hit that and he's going to get the hell out, which okay. he does. He's done his job. They and the bomb as well. Do get the ramp room control. And if that's all they were after, I'm sure their Astralis are happy to go for that type of a trade. You can have the space. We'll take the kill. Zip. You can see him. He is still worried about Yard. He knows he needs to help on both fronts here. And now the utility issues start to fall in favor of complexity. You'd love to draw that one back, wouldn't you, JT? He's going to continue with the dual wow. blame. Will oblige, just steps out, and that's a huge kill from JT. Yeah, you'd love to see that one. Very precise. Read him like a book. Not a very good one. They head towards this squeaky door and tunnel down the vent. They can go towards B, where Farley has that orb. That's an option available. If they try and hit towards top, a smoke towards main, a flash towards the CT vent, be the best option they have here and remember floppy still has this ramp presence so if they want to activate top floppy tries to make his way around to get up the heavens that could be the difference maker as they're starting to search out squeaky grim the point man of this he spotted one towards the site will win the jewel glaive goes down his config up in the rafters and he has to do it all config has to get every kill oh, required here because farley as mentioned is on the lower side of the map and will have to save well, 11 to 10, we could be going to three. We could be. That's a four and five conversion for complexity. That's very difficult to do on the likes of Nuke on the T side. You don't see it too often, but they've managed to actually make it look quite comfortable in the end. Quite a lackluster hole towards upper, and it will be Astralis giving the round up. Barley to save the AWP, and he's going towards outside, and he could find himself in a bit of hot water here if the T start retreating towards spawn as well. So where are we position himself? That's probably the, a wise choice, I would say. Don't go any further. It's not very often that Blame is the one who makes that kind of overstep. So uh, an anomaly there in that regard, I imagine. It was so unnecessary as well, it felt like. The fact they've already got the advantage, he doesn't need much more information than that. I guess he just thought he could straight up win the aim duel, but you have to say, a cracking shot from JT. He's been playing tremendously well. He had some fantastic moments on Inferno as well. 
single-handedly winning them rounds uh, towards a banana position, but uh, let's have another look at that one. Just so to post a gun round yeah, They've won the pistol in the second round follow-up, but uh, since then, be nothing but complexity, and this could be yet another one. Looking for 11-11, make a wish flop as he jumps down towards the vents. For now, absolutely fine. Detected for sure. Oh, Glaive. That was brave, ambitious. Yeah, they just needed to heavy rotate down ramp here, right? That, that's the key. Nobody's here to help zip. So the forecast for this round seeming very gloomy. Something to get a little bit overcast here for Astralis. This is a much better looking complexity on this map than on their own choice. <laughs> yeah, which is strange to say, but you're, you're dead on. This is the best looking they've, uh, they've been so far. The T side of Nuke, who would have thought? Their CT side left a lot to be desired, but uh, this is fantastic. So is that shot from Convic. Won't really mean too much, but nice to watch either way. We have got a chance for Grim to mow them both down at this stage. The first, and he has heard the second as well. I dare say he'll pick this one up. Apparently not, trying to save the AWP. Lame F will fall back towards CT spawn. I'm known to be an AWP is blame, so let's see if he gets tested here. Might take a couple of pot shots, just hoping to find another kill. I wonder what, um, in in that piece as we were coming up from the from the break, Glaive was talking about show their, their, full, their full strength, right? Their full power level. I'm curious as to what they they believe that is as Astralis, right? Because I think if Config and Blame are playing exceptionally well, that's great. But outside of that, I still have a hard time looking for where the remaining firepower is going to come from. And that that, that is going to be the question that's going to stay around Astralis for some time. Yeah, I, I think you, you're definitely onto something there. I think it's fair to say Zipex and Glaive, maybe not the players that they once were in terms of the fragging department. They're not as uh, emphatic and as... Uh, well put together, they're still very competent, but yeah, not the stars of the show anymore. And uh, Farley, he's had his moments, to be fair to him, in this second map, but uh, still quiet in terms of uh, a world-class performance. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a nice shot. <laughs> that was a very nice shot. So then, we're all tied up. I can't believe it. No, me either. It's kind of just happened. And they could be going quite poppy here, Henry. Fang's straight into the heart here. This is a change of pace. Out they walk. Fang straight in for a fight. Config. It's going to stall them out here as two have made it down the vent. At least that's some space, or was it? Straight into Zip, who's already ready and waiting for this. He's going to grab another kill. The bomb in the vent here. Zip's done a great job. Yeah, this is looking like the first convincing round they've had on their CT campaign. Just Grim and JT remaining. I say just. They've both been playing phenomenally well, and Grim, he's actually got some positional control. He's beneath heaven right now, and they don't seem to be aware. And it's the AWP, an awkward weapon to yield here. And... Uh, at this I don't point, like his chances. This is going to be rough. I really don't like his chances with the AWP here. It feels like the worst weapon for the job. Yeah, I think he might be onto something there, but he's going towards main at least. So Grim will let him live for now. Oh, oh no, he's not. Back. He's coming in. Oh, the timing's far. He's dead. No two ways about it. Oh, oh, not, oh, no oh, scope oh, or do. Oh. Using the bayonet on the end of the AWP there. It will be enough. And JT, maybe uh, a souvenir frag. Take one home, as he's left in the three versus one. Bomb towards the vent still. Oh, that was looking very likely for a headshot, but not meant to be. Makes up for it on the second interaction and needs to be careful here, Farley. Hits the shot though, and finally, Astralis will post a gun round here in the second half. Crazy there that it was just after that opening exchange towards the double doors, that it was just still one more player down towards the lower side. Even though the bomb was in the vents there, the rotation, it was Farley. The man who gets the no scope is the one who has to drop in the vent to help them out. And he saw the leg well before he saw anything else on Grim there. So fortunate timing there for Farley, but a great finish from him and what they need from the AWPA. Anyone's game at this point, looking for a third map, our complexity. Great showing on the T side here on Nuke. Farley back towards outside, blame F. Patrolling towards the squeaky door with config. Well, this is the type of round that complexity can win. It's like picking up Astralis and dropping them over the knee. A bit of a backbreaker here, just considering the state of their finances. But the same can be said on the other side. Complexity being able to dart across. JT, the in-game leader, has been able to grab this space. It is a duel against Blame and Farley. It's two players to task and stall out any of this crawl. They're both focused in the same direction. Is that the correct map? I think there might be a gap in that main smoke, actually. Just off the line for now. And, well, JT's aware of the one-way first two kills come in. Glaive does find Grim. And as I mentioned, I think there was a gap on the main smoke. I don't yeah. know how else Glaive would have found that frag. Well, this one's starting to unfold. And finally, a very clean round from Astralis. As they go 13 to 11. Zerk will be better off saving the AWP. His finances are at absolute zero. 
In terms of next round, they'll be getting $1,900 per player without the plant. So, yes, indeed, you do have to save. And uh, might just be the force by a round of this. Could be the beginning of the end for Complexity. This is a very, very important round to give up. Henry, I know that only we can see this, but that's Grimm's body there that right. Glaive killed. Yep. Which I imagine the smoke landed just oh, here. Okay, I see what you yep. There it is. You're right. You're dead on. A massive void. Uh, that's not good at all, is it? Bit of an issue. Bit of an issue for sure. Uh, certainly not for Astralis, though. They, uh, oh, maybe, maybe that was the problem. Bit of dust in the old mouse. It happens to the best of us. It can do. Has been known to happen. At the worst of times. So, will they allow the AWP to be held onto? Uh, it's in towards T spawn, as mentioned. I don't see a hunt ensuing, so there we have it. It will be 13 to 11. Astralis closing in on the series victory. So, round 25. Nozog will save the orb, but get no extra cash, of course. He's got a Molotov and a flash. Do they want to buy up around him? This is the biggest decision they'll make. Do they want to go all in? Apparently not. They go for the more conservative approach, not allowing them to get to 14 rounds necessarily with the AWP up there. And we've seen how powerful the drops can be already, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently versus Astralis, there's an opportunity here. Nice yeah. little hops from the Zerg. Let's see what he can find here, because it's truly he's the only, the only real chance they have. So... It's like Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> exactly. Hearts Molotov coming through momentarily. The upper bomb site hasn't been too pretty, but uh, that's a nice shot. The upper goes down. <laughs> Didn't move. Come on, Vigor. You're dead. Um, next. Well, Blame F getting all the information required. Which is towards outside. You can hear the speculative shots from his teammates going in towards the lobby, following them towards ramp. They still have the AWP, but a Zipex, who's no stranger to this position, he's in a prime one. The old bait and switch. Farley doesn't have to stick around. Get that one kill. Stay alive. That's it. Aiding your teammate who needs to get at least one. There it is. That will do. Anything else now is a bonus. They keep it clean. Grim should go down. And there it is. Well handled. All right. That's uh, counter, uh, Henry G's school of Counter-Strike right there. Yeah. Live and in real time. Subscribe now. You can't actually pay for those type of lessons. But if actually, well, we're, we're starting. We had like a cameo thing we were talking about. Yeah, cameo starting up soon. I'm sure we can start a whole bunch of different. Uh, yeah. Online tutorials. Services. Yeah, we could uh, bring it all out. A full rebrand. All going to happen. Right then. Is it the swan song? <laughs> it could be. You never know, Chad. You never know. That's the thing. Beauty of Counter-Strike here. So the Desert Eagle for Horsehead. Remember, his finances were greatly impacted from the previous round, having to save. And Floppy, he's found a bit of a gap here. This could be interesting. He'll get the opening frag as well. I dare say the second. And that's going to be round. We'll see if Blame F can make anything of it. There has been significant damage, which is not worth it anymore. There's a lot of nades available. So one of the keys is if they can find a nade kill onto Fang or Grim, there's an opportunity for the retake. But unless this utility is perfectly placed, I'm with you. It has to be the save. They've just been brute forced into this top site. That's a little bit of an FPX type maneuver right there with that play from Floppy coming out the squeaky door, looking at the heart, the flash is perfectly timed. Seen that one once or twice and just the save immediately. So you know that Astralis are taking things seriously when they're not even giving this a look in. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. They weren't expecting that sort of play coming through as well. Very well done for Complexity. Uh, we did talk about the flashbangs and JT sides, and uh, that was a perfect encapsulation of everything coming together. You've got Floppy at the tip of the spear as well, cracking things open towards the bomb side. Let's have a look at that right now. You can see they're so blind, discombobulated. Blade does a standard chance, and is handling that spray like a man. It's going to be Floppy, and uh, well done. 14 to 12, as we get into round number 27. And there's been a bit of an issue, Henry, here, as far as opening deaths. Uh, concerned, right? When you look at Astralis, Config has been involved in seven, one, five. Zipper's five and oh. Glaive's been involved in seven. He's one, three, lost four. He's the only one negative for Astralis. Blame has been involved in five, one, five. Wow. Harley's been involved in two and one, two. So uh, you guys do the maths right there, but uh, opening kills are few and far between here for complexity in this matchup. And Floppy, he's been the one suffering a lot of opening deaths. He's three and eight as far as opening exchanges is What's concerned. What's going on here with the AWP? Well, a lot. Farley uh, means dangerous. He's getting real <laughs> dangerous. One, done, dead. The fight on the side, though. That's where the real action is. It's going to be Config and Glaive in tandem getting a couple of kills here. It's a two on two, a two on three, sorry. A one on three. Maths is hard and throws this for JT. He's dead. 21 kills for Glaive, 15 on the board. And 
maybe the save was worth it after all. Apparently so. That was very interesting. I, I wasn't sure the AWP was going for there. You could hear all the grenades coming through, the Molotovs, the flashes, and he's just jumping in towards Squeaky Door. He gets the kill, and thankfully they are mowed down. Complexity, that is, as we find, series point for the Danes. 15 to 12. Money still there for Complexity. They now need three in a row to stand a chance at overtime. They've got AKs across the board. No AWP to fall back on. And will they continue with this fast-paced gameplay? Time will tell as we enter what could be the final round here of the series. Looking for the 2-0. Astralis open things up with a deficit. Convict towards the hub. It's good that Floppy got one back in the column. Right, we were just talking about his woes in that department there. So one back, not bad. But uh, a lifeline again. Right, this really could come back to bite Astralis in the ass here. It is blame behind the T-Red box is just going to try and wait this one out. It's Farley trying to assist here, and if I'm Complexity, I'm in absolutely no rush whatsoever. Oh, they're going to be ahead of the smoke wall. If the smoke wall gets used, there's a kill for Farley. He has to hit this shot. Has to hit this, and he does. So they're going to now accelerate. You want to try and pressure ramp in this environment. You know the orb can't be there to help them. So apply pressure to Zip, who's been Having a go at things. Oh, he's timed this very well, Chad. He's made things uncomfortable, but they rise to the occasion. At least take him down. I've got to say, one of the best in the business towards ramp. Farley will have to deliver here. He's going to die to the flames. Not quite. 20 HP, and Glaive will have to put on a bit of an aim display here. Smoked off, though, however. Might try and make his way towards the silo, but uh, we'll zoop one step ahead of him. Four on two. Blame F. Residing towards wind at the last line of defense here. If he can get a kill here, there's a chance. There's no bomb planted just yet. I know exactly where that planter is, and here's another opportunity for Grim with a nice shot. That should be a... Ali, we've already seen him try and clutch from this position once. This time, all the same result. He's going to go down, and and that's it. Okay, so Astralis, they lose to an aggressive play, then they save, and then they, they make adjustment, and they win. And then they go aggressive, they give away the opening pick, they lose the round. What's the adjustment going to be here? It is Sweaty Palms moments now. They, they can buy, sure, but with their loss bonus, bottom of the barrel as well, they are the ones who risk going into round 30 with not a whole lot next to their name. So this is a very important round for Astralis. Complexity can truly take this to overtime if they can convert right now. Looking to try ramp again. There's several bodies over towards radio early. Barley's back over there with the AWP. The positioning now, they didn't give up that first kill towards Hut. A bit more of a static approach here. In the CT. Zip is so ready for this vent drop. The fact that he's just literally been tasked with making sure Floppy cannot get down the vent from the squeaky door maneuver. These are the adjustments you have to make. If teams have persistent utility, persistent ground taking like that, you, you have to dedicate someone. Well, these late smokes coming out once again. At the 1 minute 15 mark, we'll see a response as we'll see smokes deployed towards squeaky door. And Zipex actually leaving rampantly with Farley here. This is another ambitious maneuver from the Danish Sniper. He's got players all around him here towards Lobby. And he'll pick up the first. We'll oh, just come through. Nice smoke. Great smoke. Nothing they can do with it now. They have to go towards Up Up. They've got those outside smokes, but they are dissipating. Five on four. Astralis with their best opportunity yet to close things out. Zip's in the perfect position as well. If they do try and pincer towards this top side, he can just pivot out at any moment. JT's not going to be ready for a move like this and playing for info with 39 seconds on the clock. This is Zipex free every day of the week. Now towards top, the mollies, the flashes, they're coming in, but they need to find the frags. Bobby's found one, bang the other, they're in, but they need to get more of these kills. It's every single frag falling in the favor. It's just, just Farley. They just melted. They were all there. They were all healthy. And they're all dead. And they're all dead. What's just happened? Remember the finance situation. 1,900 is the loss bonus into the next, next to every single one of the names for Astralis here. This could oh, be overtime. Yeah. Complexity. This definitely they got could the, be overtime. the driver's cap on. That was, a, Raren. that was essentially a five on three, right? Because it was the opening kill from Farley. Zipex got the freebie towards main. Then everyone dies all at once. Floppy finding two big kills. Fang and Horzo both chiming in at the same time. And can you believe it? It's 15 to 14. Complexity bouncing back somehow, some way. We're going to round number 30 and Farley will have to save the AWP. He will do by the looks of things. No one pushing towards his position, but still, that is catastrophic for Astralis. I was, just, I was getting ready to wrap that one up. Yeah, it felt like it was done. So Floppy kills Zip outside, right? And then they get the top rafter frag, and then Blame and Glaive are both stuck in the site in similar positions. So... God damn. Oh, yeah. It's it's the... I think in, in that type of scenario, the, the linchpin is config scoop. So at least they have three big guns to work with here, but I don't love seeing Blame on a Deagle when he has so much responsibility. He's in a very key position here. This is not the area you want a Deagle to ply your trade. Yeah, I think you might be onto something there. 
The MP9 towards upper as well. It's serviceable, I suppose, but uh, I think they need to catch a kill by surprise at this stage. They need to get an advantage somewhere. Bali, not super aggressive this time towards main entrance. You can see there's so much uncertainty right now. Where can they find this Surely advantage? Surely he doesn't swing into this, Henry. Surely he doesn't. Well, he does. That's a freebie. And uh, over time, getting closer and closer towards ramp he goes. Is there anyone even there to defend him? Uh, Zippo is already starting lower, so at least play him. He's got the orb. Yeah, but they're not going to let him have a freebie. They'll have the Molotov and that's him done. JT will find config as well. Looks like overtime is almost guaranteed at this stage. Couple more chances. And Stralis will need to steal a couple more if they even can get close to winning this round. Zipex, can he do anything? Nope. Yeah, he's screwed now and they're, they're pinned. He's going to swing. He's going to try and fight. Sure, give them something. That's a kill, but he should be one and done. Fang will find the traders blame. I mentioned not known to be an orb, but this is his time to shine. His moment in the sun right here. Malta, it's bloody hot, but it needs to get hotter now as the flames hit the feet. Forced back towards the decon door. Glaive's low, remember, and they know where he is, and he's also dead, so it's now just blame. He's got to do this alone. Here he comes. He recovers the M4. More familiar territory, but uh, no kits, no utility, and a long, long walk for what feels like an eternity round towards the single door position. I think Complexity have done this. This could be enough now. It's a decent effort to open things up, but remember, he has no kits. Feeling himself now. The calling looking good. Absolutely true. Fortunately, Astralis remain on the CT side, but uh, first kill almost eludes them. They'll actually open things up here with a couple, but still a lot of work to be done. The bomb goes down towards upper, and we've seen this bomb side melt a couple of times. Fortunately, it looks like it's completely under control here, and Farley gets a very nice one to close things out. He's coming alive as well. He's had some impact good, isn't kills. It? Yeah, he's actually been able to, to find some impact here on the AWP the confidence. team. He is uh, dragging up the rear here, but not too far behind. Uh, from top to bottom, the scoreboard is quite close on this Astralis side of things. And that was a little bit around that had everything. It had outside smokes, but it also had a top split element and it had the same top pop uh, pieces, right? Floppy coming out the squeaky yep. smoke, players out of hut. So it was a little bit of everything from JT there being thrown in the direction. And well, he just had a two minute break. Grim doesn't look like he's had a break at all. I think they're the ones who feel that this is their game to lose now. Whereas Astralis probably just gonna focus in a little bit more because I think they got a, a little bit lax in the final stages of that. Yeah, half. totally agree. Um, they looked like they were uncomfortable towards upper, couldn't fend off any rushes. I think your, your point about losing, not even losing the round, losing so many casualties to the Glocks, set them up for such a difficult half in terms of the finances. But here's Glaive. I don't love this angle. The swing out will come through and Fang will take him. Down to one HP, unfortunate there. Oh, does he spot him in the corner? Yep. He absolutely does. Config comes out on top, four versus three, but still so many players just funneling out of this hot position. They actually have control, I would say, as well. Incendiary down towards the bomb site, but uh, one received towards heaven as well. All Zerg with the AWP. He's been great. We'll see whether he can continue this as Farley, man of the moment, flashed off and not taken down just yet. Oh, I was going to say, they still hadn't dealt with him. He was just sitting there completely blind in main. Hauser could get it done. Coming out the heavens here, it's easy to stifle. This is just zip. And that was a round that started with Astralis openings. You know, it really falls apart quite quickly there. So. Uh, the, the, you, you look at that heart situation. I understand what you're talking about with Glaive. I think they're having the problem of where else can we stand on the site? These these bloody complexity kids are mulling yeah. everything. Like Absolutely the util is, is smothering. So I assume that played into Glaive's positioning here. But this is, look at Config after two kills. He only had two bullets left. Oh, oh it's enough. Oh, wow. Through the legs. That could have been a double up. Because if Farley got unblinded there and took that shot with the AWP, uh, important kill from Halzerk. Well, 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 we go 1-1. One, one. Lexity have already got the job done, really, with uh, a single round posted in overtime. That's more than enough. Ideally, we'll get two. We'll see if they can convert it here. Astralis looking uncomfortable on their CT side, it has to be said. Now, Zerk, been a real thought in their side of the AWP. JT and co. Making maneuvers towards outside. Grim covering him from the upper position here. Blame F. This could be a very important kill. One which he'll convert. 73 HP, Halzerk feeling brave. With the AWP, I dare say he'll have this one. Flash. Very good flash. Good shot as well, four and four. Teamwork now, it's still staying paramount for complexity here. But the curious thing with Astralis, if people take a look at some of the patterns that they've been rotating around the map on the CT side, it's strange, but it's gonna work for now. Ali will buy them some time. And again, the reposition, looking for some more real estate. Our Astralis extremely proactive on this CT side. Wave will smoke off towards main entrance and just going to be exploring his options towards T spawn. Maybe he can get behind them, but they're actually heading towards ramp or heaven. We'll see which way they're inclined. There's Glaive on the flank. It's actually going to do nothing for him, though. 
If he cancels it, I think he'll be better for it. Well, he's in a strong position here if they do go up the heavens, though. He might be at... Oh, is it ramp or is it heaven? 30 seconds. 30 seconds indeed. It's be ramp. Got a lot to do here. And with no smokes, they'll do so well to clear out this position. They can flash window effectively. They might be onto something. It'll have to be a hell of a flash, though. Here we go. Zivex needs at least one. Not going to find it just yet. They give him no opportunities. But he has got Convict down there with him. Not going to pull the trigger just yet until it really matters. And now, mowing them down. And there we have it. It's going to be 2-1. A nice clean finish there for Astralis. Running out of time. Complexity. You have to scramble down towards low. I didn't check the window room. And uh, we go and switch things over. Astralis now on the T side, and Farley will bring out the AWP to kick things off. So this is where it's going to get interesting. Both teams starting at 12,500 full buys across the board. It's where you really get to test these teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. No real woes as far as the economy is concerned. You can get every single strategy that you would want into play here. I think the T side put together, it got desperate in the final stages for complexity, but they definitely had some well-executed rounds. This is Halzerk swinging out, taking the fight. He's beat tagged, oh. but he's going to get the kill. So Halzerk gets the better of the head ahead of the orpers but speaking ahead there's someone above him they might drop in any minute that's config he might as well he knows he's low has he been detected Didn't though? Hear him? apparently not and he gets the double kill chat but still at three on three even situation good reaction here from krim will manage to flash his way back into a decent position and for now everything slows down they've got two players in towards t-spawn blame f once again alone towards ramp and floppy he's actually given it up they go towards B. Fang is already down on the lower deck. They take inventory right now on the Astralis utility. They, they have enough if they were to finish B that they could smoke off the doors. They could molly into the windows. And I think Blame can smell blood here. He knows that there's one just directly above, just hoping for an overzealous peak here from Floppy. It's so noisy. Blame is, has a lot of information on at least one player, and Floppy is only now just considering the option. If Blame was to go back, he might see the boots here. He wants oh. to try and bait him down the ladder. Come on. Come on. Down you come, Floppy. It's all about this fight. Who will come out on top? It's wasting so much time, though. But Blame might not even get this kill. You're right. If he goes towards Vents, yeah, which he has. Now he doesn't really have much to talk about. Do they go back A? They must do. Well, he's called that he's dropped down lower, right? He would have heard that drop down from upper. So maybe he's calling for his teammates to come back. But it is grim. This is the all-important shot. He is primed and ready for it. Storing the one way here. Boys, there's 13 seconds. You need to get the bomb down. You need to get in the site right now. This it's hard. loose. They're dropping in. They're getting it down. This Flame and Glaive. Two players you'd want alive for this. The one way, it's going to subside pretty quickly here. This is going to get very dicey indeed. It's up to Glaive now. Repositioning himself. But allows himself to be known. Back to the two on two. Who comes out on top? The spam war is coming through. Lots of time left. Then it's going to be a two versus one. Down to Blame F. Let's get a flank behind them. I don't think this is the correct call. for that. No, it's definitely not. Oh, he's got no chance at all now. I would say that's going to be it. That was an absolute fumble from Astralis, Jad. What a poorly played round that was in the mid round there. They thought they had all the information in the world, but that information works against them here. That was an opportunity to get yourself double overtime secured at a minimum. And again, the same thing. I don't know if it's lack of focus. They let their foot off the gas. Or maybe it's just the wrong calls. But either way, that, that didn't look good at all. Yeah, it's a lack of assertion, it seems like. Just toying with them, sure, dropping it towards me. heaven. Like, he didn't even know there were players down there. They get these opening kills to kick things off as well. Glaive, usually in this sort of scenario, you'd be thinking, yeah, this guy, he's going to make mincemeat of them. He's got, he's out positioned them and uh, anything. But it's just quite messy and it looks like they're just a little bit discombobulated as well. We'll get into this next round and it's actually holds up towards ramp there's actually opened things up they're the ones looking for map point now yeah dust two looking very likely here isn't it yeah i think map around right. the corner didn't expect this one to be coming out to play especially with how things started here on nuke both teams looking to concede their own map choice this ramp is the port of call again ahead of the smoke zip sure but the rotation's coming it's coming quick and he's still laser focused towards floppy's position Oh, 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 yeah, for good reason. Zip doubles up. Fang and Floppy in the dirt. Three on three. But again, a three on three Glaive. in the mid round from Glaive. That's what no it needs way. to be. They're just pushing. Config now has got another. They know where the last player is. They know where the bomb is. It's stuck up towards the rafter. This is all JT. <laughs> Config's going to get it done. 18 now for Astralis. Didn't look likely, but they pulled it off. That is insane. The duels that we're taking there, the challenges that are being presented didn't look favorable whatsoever. Glaive taking Holzog down and a 1v1 outside of the AK-47. That's nuts, but it's Zipex, the man at the moment there. Had to find two kills here. He delivered on all fronts, and it's not the cleanest victory, but Convict will take it all day long, ducking and weaving there. 
as uh, we do. Oh, not again. Be boys, careful. Boys, boys, boys. Can't be doing that. And uh, series points once more for Astralis. Maybe the Hail Mary as Config just looks to take things into his own hands once again, but he's just running for utility now. And JT's got a guaranteed frag here. And it uh, looks like double overtime. Yeah, yeah. double overtime is uh, a delectable morsel on the menu right now. JT has warded them off, but now the bomb has been scooped. The mid rounds from Astralis haven't been convincing, so no. I, I'm having a hard time piecing this one together. And here's the bigger issue. Blame is going to want Farley to initiate first. And the reason that probably shouldn't happen is two, two big reasons. Farley has the AWP, and second of all, Blame's on 4 HP. Yeah. But I know the way that uh, this tends to go down in a Blame clutch round. Let's see what he can do. Not a complete foregone conclusion, but uh, not looking good at all. One minute remaining, and Blame makes his way towards May. Shop back to a two on two. And he is just dissecting the map now. It has to be a nuisance. Has to catch one of them off. Farley will just be holding towards the lobby. Well, see, Farley it did initiate first, right? He, he bought all this space. All of this is through Farley's molly and the kill. Now some steps are being made, potentially heard from this vent position, but are you going to drop the bomb down, Blame? That's the question, or are you going to actually make the ascent yourself? Well, it'd be decent in this decent, situation. Yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. Speaking of ascent, up the ladder, it's not the map, it's the kill, and Blame on like 4 this. HP. Maybe he's done it. Halzo, to clutch again. The AWP, the Deagle, all the nades oh, he can require right here. He's found the gap, he's thread the needle, he's got this kill dead to right. Farley's in the dirt right now, and that Molotov, that Molotov could it's get enough. it done on its own. Just throw that, watch it burn, watch it burn, as he's throwing one back, the extinguish. He's got the kit, he's on the sit, and this should be it. Halzerk is gonna take us to double overtime, 18-18. Wow. We go again. That's amazing. A really exciting round there. Wasn't clear who'd be picking it up. A valiant effort from the Astralis boys up against it. They managed to bring it right down to the 1v1, but all the utility you could ask for there. An amazing comeback, and we'll get right back into the action here. We'll be Astralis on the T side now. That was the moment. It looked like it collapsed, but the Desert Eagle, so composed and a great incendiary, even with the response. He's got the smoke to deal with it. I'll have that. Thank you very much. I'll take the cover and a full defuse. There's nothing you can do. Got seven seconds on that incendiary towards the top. More than enough time to defuse. And there we have it. T side campaign now for Astralis. Back towards ramp we go. Holzak, man at the moment, looking to deliver. Ouch, ouch, ouch. What's happened there? The wall band from Zipex has 98 damage towards Grim. Woof. That hurts a lot. How is he alive? I don't know. I wonder if he knows how much damage he just inflicted there. That was kind of insane. So you can see they haven't purchased helmets because they're up against the AK-47s, but uh, that one's back to bite them somewhat. Yeah, that'll happen. Oh, his config. Another one of these maneuvers. This time, Fang's going to catch him off guard. But Zip had some space as well to work with. They're holding hands right now. They're holding on tighter complexity here. And it's working. Uh, not really any sort of response. The only damage they've done so far is through that speculative wall bang at the start. Not looking quite as clean as the old Astralis, this uh, T-side nuke. It's a bit scrappy, just relying on individuals to leap in, try and find a gap. It evolved past them, that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Changes in the roster haven't helped the situation either, but uh, no longer the trendsetters. Oh, this is looking quite rough. T side has been a struggle. What's up? Uh, either way, there's Glaive. He's dropped. Guaranteed round for complexity. They will open things up in double overtime, yeah? I feel like there are definitely more options on the T side for complexity to call at the moment than Astralis, but at the, at the same time, this one's hard to call. I, I feel like complexity, and this is like the cliches as we're talking about. Finally, it's an emergency. He has broken the window, and he will be dead meat. But I, I think in this kind of situation, it feels like complexity uh, want the win on this map a bit more, right? It just feels like uh, with, with some of the plays they're pulling off here. Yeah, they look more up for it. It seems like a ridiculous thing to say in Counter-Strike, but I don't know. I'm just getting that vibe. And, oh, oh, oh. Imagine that with a VR headset on. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Please stop shooting me. Oh, there we go. Good team effort here as they find 1-0. Smiles all round and uh, looking to take us a dust too. I feel like we're already there. Yeah, it does of course like that. But uh, this is a very nice setup, changing things completely. We are towards outside now. Wave and Co. setting up some smokes towards outside, looking to cross, but will they be aware there's so much manpower deployed from complexity? The AWP. AK-47s bang in the corner as well. They've got so much to check, and unfortunately, just push back once again. There will be 
Astralis, finding a couple of kills, okay. making three now. So, they actually bounce back very nicely. That was tidy work right there, isolating these fights. You're, you're expecting Astralis looking for the space. They'll take the kills. Now, how can this oh, mid-round no. <laughs> go wrong? <laughs> this is the problem with this team right now. I don't trust anything. Too many lurks. Group up, use the number advantage, yeah, use all good, your utility, good point. hit a bomb site. Good point. Why are we lurking around the map in a 2v4 True. situation? Like if flame goes down here, like you've made it a, a winnable scenario, right? Like you're dead on. I think at this point, just get together. You don't need to be backstabbing and finding those sort of kills. Um, either way, it's the way they like to operate, and 45 seconds remain. I would just say get together here, lads. They're letting him work again. The amount of space like the amount of being given Every here. second that goes by, they're going to be considering this right you can see it happening now oh the timing does a little floppy unfortunately so there we have it that should be it but uh, you never know jt's had a few moments here first kill but uh, unfortunately that's all we'll get we go 1-1 one, one as uh, they open up their t campaign an outside stack from complexity oh, ready for that chat but uh couldn't convert farley with the picks and the side play coming through as well looking very good can they find a second yeah, poised stuff here, right? Bang did great on the first, but because they weren't in any rush here, uh, Astralis, they were more than happy to take these fights. So well handled. The flank in the end doesn't cost them. And still just going through the motions here, not not getting majorly fired up, right? They just, I think they know they should have converted this map they well before have. it got Absolutely. to overtime. They got 10 rounds in their T-half, like after winning their opponent's map pick. Like, it's, uh, it's certainly a hollow victory if they do end up taking it. Zipex through the smoke will find Fang, who's been a thorn in their side the last few rounds. Bali, very aggressive. Both has missed their shot and probably just go, you know what, let's just, let's just call that let's a day. Let's go find somewhere else, shall yeah, we? Let's, uh, both, let's both retreat. Let's call it a day. Let's call it done. You reposition, I will too. I like this from Floppy, though, but surely falls back. He's not learned his lesson. Well, that's actually working out very nicely indeed. Config has been dropped back to a 4-4. Four and four. I suppose he had to get a kill back at that point. Like, they already were a man down, couldn't just grind them full ramp control. Uh, look, we've got this flank coming in from Glaive now. So uh, at this point, they were unable to get back up to check the bomb. And as they push oh, up, on. they won't be expecting this. It should be two kills oh, in the back of the head, timing, but Glaive so. is searching the wrong way, oh, searching oh, the wrong no. way. He's given this one over. Now there's a chance for complexity here. The AWP over towards ramp to back up floppy. Blame's got that kill, but they still don't know that Halzerk is here. JT's taken Farley, that might thrust them elsewhere, and they are starting to head back towards the top side. JT and Grim are the two they need to knock over. Oh, and if they tuck in behind the vent, this is a perfect setup right now. There is a smoke and a flashbang available. Zipex and Blame together. Two very good clutch players. Do they go down towards lower? No presence from the CT side there whatsoever. Grim, there is a gap here, they found it. If they can time it well, they're not even going to check the CT van. Oh, no! <laughs> could have fallen apart. Definitely could have. Getting labored now at this stage. Uh, <laughs> the teams the teams are going blow for blow. Wow. Well, just one round for complexity to secure a triple overtime and another ad break. Or will Astralis have enough to run it back? I don't know why Glaive was so committed to that peak. Like, if they're going to be anywhere, I, I doubt it would be in that tight corner, which is played like once a half. Uh, I'd be definitely trying to cut off the flanks towards ramp, but either way, it's Bloppy that comes out on top, and there will be a tactical timeout here. Cool bias of plays from Farley, but they're high-risk maneuvers. Been working out the majority of the time. Play will just blow off the door here, and we get into it. No mistakes allowed at this stage. So many bullets being exchanged at the start, just trying to cause some spam damage. It's grim towards the silo. Floppy looking for ramp pushes, and Glaive with uh, incendiary towards the huts. In this direction, but they're coming out. Config, uh, that's the bomb. Grim, fortunately, gets one back here. Blame pushes through the smoke, takes the fight. JT's found a kill elsewhere on to zip as well. There's so much pressure. Fights everywhere across the map, but the bomb is still marooned right now. And Blame with the perfect time. 30 kills for him at this juncture. Yeah, it's looking very good. Fang, might as well go for it. It is overtime. Certainly got a chance at the first shot. Won't be his, though. Farley will bring it back to... 2020, but uh, as Chad mentioned, just one round will do it for complexity to take us to triple overtime. So there it is. A scrappy round once again, not the cleanest, but the Stralis will take it quite comfortably in the end. And we will have a tea timeout this time, called by complexity. So go on, Tea time? I thought it was only in cricket. <laughs> yeah, some tea will be served, that's for sure. And uh, having a look at this final kill from Farley. 
was the demo, he needs to know that he's done his job because the fact they task Zip with going towards the lower side just to watch the vent drop almost every round, that's crazy, right? The fact he's been able to... Oh, he can't get down. There he is. There and this is. time, Zip's not down there watching for it. The one time Zip hasn't gone down there in the last few, Floppy finds the space again. So will that be the difference maker? Yeah, certainly a fly in the ointment for Astralis. Now they've lost track of Floppy. Where could he be? Actually towards window room down lower. So uh, that's a problem in itself. Nothing feels safe right now. Astralis are spread thin. They know there's a player down towards lower. There's plenty of time though, and that's a huge kill. Convict. <gasps> He makes a bit of a meal of it. Can he get out alive, though? That's the question. If he does, they presumably win the round. Nice and sendery to buy some time from Glaive, and now they need to watch towards the hut. As we spilling out of there any second now. We've got the AWP. Fortunately, a missed shot from Holzerk has led them to a strong hold towards Zappa. Bang tucked in the corner, hoping for a mistake to be made. It would have to be Glaive that walks into his crosshair. Hazard needs to try and activate the play here. If he can get a kill, get the CTs moving, it's a prime spot for Zipex, though. He knows he doesn't have to probe for any more kills. He just needs one. When they come through the bomb site, he's got that perfect position there. Ooh, so he doesn't Fang's need to do much. That's the bomb loose. They know all the info now. They know the AWP was here as well, and that's going to be it. Everybody down. And that is triple overtime secured at an absolute minimum for Astralis. Series points once again. Astralis have had this three times now. Can they do it? Can they close things out here? Fortunately for complexity on the T side, the $12,500 doesn't affect them too severely. Uh, there will be concessions, though. They won't have the AWP, it looks like. Hills will be there with the AK-47. Nice awareness from Zipex. Patrolling towards Ramprim, sussing that player out towards lower, and uh, Glaive to close things out here. That's one of the first comfortable rounds we've seen in a while on the CT side. Yeah, frustration is really sudden. As well, certainly boosts their chances. And will it be that upper explosion? That fast pop? Coming in from complexity. Doesn't seem to be the case, but it will be the first couple of frags. Will they live to tell the tale? Glaive fighting back for his life here, trying to avoid triple overtime, and it's the AWP is getting aggressive once again. Bombs down towards lower. Floppy is a menace. Keeps getting himself down towards that vent, and I dare say they've done it, Chad. That could be enough. Hard round to win right now for Astralis here. They've also heard the rotation for Farley down the vent, so he's dead to rights. Another body hits the deck, and it's just two. Zip and Glaive, as this game feels like it's never going to end. They step into Floppy's domain, and now Glaive in a one-on-four turned one-on-three by his own design. would have to do all this work with 20 seconds left on the clock. He smoked off the single door. Doesn't have a bind for the molly. It comes out. Grim will get the kill. 21-21. And Complexity versus Astralis on map number two. We can't separate them. We absolutely cannot. The action continues here, but as Chad... Rightly said, we do have a break for you here. So you do not go anywhere. On config, you got 25 for Farley there. But at this point, it's not about the numbers, it's about the plays. And somebody needs to make a game-winning play for the Danes here, or this one could go all night. Back on the CT side with the star. Again, a little bit worried about this vent drop from Floppy. It started to plague them again. In He's OT down there number two. every single round. Yeah, and, and that's that's half the issue, right? So when Zip was going down, there was nobody. He, he's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, and now trying to position himself oh, ahead of this to flash. It's good, but the kill was better. There is the trade from Grim, and now starting to work towards ramp. They know that's where Zip resides. Convicts also dropped down to try and plug this gap. If they can just take these fights and confirm that type of a kill, there should be no pressure, no need to step on out. It's a rough one. It's a very awkward angle. Back to a three on three we go. Nothing separating these two teams so far. One minute on the clock. Config, the only player down towards lower. He's got his world cut out for it. Doors are open and he, he's just waltzing around like nothing's coming his way. Well, there will be a lot coming his way, actually. It's going to be three players in front of him. The AWP towards the ramp itself. And this is, that's rough. Config gets nothing done there whatsoever. A freebie for Fang. Wave away towards the double doors. And this one could be done already. Once Those the bomb's motto. planted, they've, yeah, they've already seen in a clean shot, and there we have it. Config didn't want to wait for his teammates. No, he wanted to I, take, the, take the fight straight away. I don't know why he was so blindsided by the fact that they were already down ramp, because Farley just died to yeah. at ramp. But either way, I, like I mentioned before, I feel like Complexity want to win this map a little bit more so than that of the Danes. You might be right. Well, that's a very good way to kick things off. Very convincing Sweet. shot as well to close things shot. down. Bang. He's coming to play, and there's going to be 1-0 in the first round of triple overtime here. What's the response? Uh, Astralis just not looking good in these CT rounds. Pulled all over the map, taking challenges that aren't required, and this one especially was uh, very confusing. Could have waited for the teammates to turn up, just want to take matters into his own hands, I suppose. 
But it was always going to be an awkward fight, especially after you spotted three players. So, round two. Still with a full buy, of course. You have $12,500 in overtime rounds. And Blame F will be trying to position himself towards the outside of the red box. Call for a flashbang for the swing. Fancy's up. There's the flash. It's nothing for him. If anything, he got a bit flashed by it himself. Brings it back to a four and four, but these oh. are scrappy rounds to say the least. It's a tempt there from Halzerk. He's going to quickly be on their tail and Glaive. Uh, well, Glaive's he's, a, he's in lobby. He's just taking some fights. He's in, he's out, he's ducking all about as it is just going to be Grim and Fang left alive. Now, considering how strung out Australis have been, if Fang and Grim stay together, they might be able to isolate a fight. Glaive will be the first. He's just going to take this one. He's lonesome. Thinks the smoke's a wall. Grim coming out there and again. We've seen this happen time and time again. Yeah. Overcommitting to as many fights and clean shots, clean as your life and complexity. Bang. And Grim working in tandem here towards the upper bomb side. They've got plenty of time. They don't have to commit to this plan just yet, but they will. Finally, with the one way smoke. The orb so difficult to maneuver with towards heaven, trying to suggest he's dropped down. Zipex will get nothing from main entrance for now. How do they even get into this round? It's so hard. Farley's at least spotted one towards the back of the side, but Fang's just shown himself hot. So Zip knows where both are. He has the kit, but only Flash... Well, I, I thought he knew where both were. Didn't Farley spot the side guy on the jump? Maybe didn't quite catch the top of the head there, and that's 23 to 21. Right now, if I'm Astralis, get me out of here. Get me to dust too. Might need a clean slate on this. It just... It feels like they've had the chance to close this game so many times. Yeah, and that was a four on two as well, Chad. That's just not good enough from them. So many solo fights, so many wide swings. Grim and Fang made light work of them. They make it look easy. Yeah, they really do. I didn't even take any damage there. Like, look how clean it was. Just uh, ducking and weaving, bomb down. One by one, they come through. The all towards the heaven position. That's an absolute collapse from Astralis. 2-0 now, looking for the clean sweep on the T side. I think I'm agreeing with you. I think we're going to dust two. Who would have thought it? Zipex with all the play for here towards ramp, but they changed the pace up. Lexity not giving anything away in the third and final round here. A little bit of wall damage there from Zipex, but not much to speak of. Difficult position to get that one kill and drop off. Let's see if he can make good. Oh, how's the... He did find the opener before on the boost, and I think if Zip is to swing out here, it might be a similar scene. He's just going to hold the line, allow the rifles to filter on in. The pressure has been applied, the space has been taken, and we have a five-on-five five where it's worked out accordingly for complexity. They've been able to push Astralis across the map, force them into some of these heavy rotations. They're in a situation right now with two towards the lower side, two towards the upper, and, well, I would say a no-man's land. Farley just out there in warehouse. He won't be to contribute to anything whatsoever unless they come out squeaky door so no kills found just yet time ticking away we hit the 40 second mark and they have got ramp control and lobby they're yet to make a dent on any real prime real estate on the map towards up a potential it's a fake they're gonna go big they're just hoping to draw one rotator away that molly stalls them out for now. It is going to stifle this top hit. They have to go B. They have to go into Zipex's domain. He's down here behind the site. Needs to hit a couple of shots. The first is good. The pivot, not good enough. Halzerk survives. The bomb goes down. We have a four. No, it doesn't go down. It's been denied. It's in the open right now. Farley's going to spill it even further. <laughs> and fighting for survival are Astralis just through the smokes. They're continuing to claw their way into this. That'll be their only round on the CT side of OT number three. But it's something to work with here. It's not pretty, but it will do for sure. Back and forth we go. 2-1, though, for complexity at the top of your screens. Astralis now switch over to the T side. And yeah, it has to be said, this is getting a little bit troublesome for them. But after slowing things down, time is of the essence. And one and a half kills from Zipex is just about enough. The Farley to come and rotate him with his M4, deny access to the plant. And then you can see how scrappy it gets to this stage as well. Just eight seconds remaining. Nothing can be done. At least they get one round on the board. And uh, I'm not sure what that piece of paper can say, but... Uh, Hopefully, we'll have the solution to their problems. Outside smoke's deployed, but what is that? Is that a gap? Well, it could be the triple wall here, so that should be completely covered off. And Blame just took down JT, so that's a nice opener that's been provided from Blame. He's been relatively quiet as by his standards. They will get this secret control. I, I hate to feel that if Complexity just play a default round, they'll win it. Not sure where that JT exchange... Ah, oh, there you go. You can see that body hunched over next to the heart. Now, how's like searching? Draws one back. And at this point in a four on four, you can just batten down the hatches here. Oh, it's, 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 it's dangerous. 
Mopi will send in towards the single side at least. Ali so far removed from this situation. They're going to have to pump the brakes somewhat. Blame F though. As you'd expect, lurking towards the hot position, finds Grim, and they've got the man advantage once again. Zipex patrols towards the vents, and in terms of utility, they still have a smoke, few flashbangs, molotovs as well. Alzok's been so dangerous in these sort of situations. We have to be honest about this situation. Towards the lower side, it's all floppy all day of the week. He's the only one that can stop this push. There's three players coming his way. The bomb is here. Glaive has his knife out right now, not ready for it. The first exchange comes through, but there it is, Glaive. Make sure that this one doesn't fall foul and we might be tying things up 23-23 as steps are heard. Blaine, this is his absolute wet dream. He just gets to peer in the corner. Thank you very much. I'll take both of you. Not looking at your kills. Everyone's favorite. That's a big four-piece feed for him. Did it have to be wet dream? Could it just be it a just normal came dream? Out, Henry. Okay, I'm yeah. So you're, everyone's excited. The hybrid casting right now. <laughs> it's and, and true. Everyone's having a go. Quite deep in, in this game. <laughs> no, normally, normally, it's <laughs> absolute dream would have done. Just uh, that's what I'll say. Um, oh dear. <laughs> so there it is. It's uh, getting to the pointy end now, and. Uh, Astralis have managed to get the first round. They're looking for one more to guarantee uh, quadruple overtime, I suppose. No break. No break OT. after this one, yeah. What OT, we're safe. So, Marley back on the orb. Astralis looking much better, I would say, in that round. Still looking for that beautiful orchestrated execution from them, but that's a nice shot. Two openers in two rounds consecutively. Blaming the previous, Farley's AWP this they, time round. They'd love to offer up as a freebie. They'll just be elsewhere. Someone will take a peek and challenge Holzog somewhere. That's what keeps happening. But uh, can they hold on to it? And at least give trade potential if it does. The floppy just using the pixel gap here. See incendiary in hand, ready to deploy. As soon as he spots anyone, not there to fight, just there to delay. Funnel them back towards upper, perhaps. I would love to Astral for Astralis to get to 24 first and then fumble again at 24. <laughs> Almost will certainly happen. <laughs> like it's, this is wild. I was really looking forward to seeing some very clean and 2022 meta CS. It's uh, not a thing exactly that. Flame map doesn't quite convert the kill, but Grim certainly does. That's a nice one. Brings it back to a four and four. JT looking for the double kill. Can't quite find it. Farley will keep things even for now. And it's back and forth, but Two versus one. Oh, he can't do it. I think he might be in trouble here. Looking for map points. It's complex, and they've got it. One more will do it. All right, well, dust two. One round away here for complexity. Taking this the distance. They want to go to three. They want to continue to push Astralis zero, hoping to show their full this power point, level. Astralis deserve to play a third, but they need to prove <laughs> themselves in the third map. Actually, I, I I'd like to see it. I'd like to see them actually have to be tested properly here and uh, complexity deserve it as well they've played tremendously well after going down on their map pick of inferno which feels like a lifetime ago at this stage they really have bounced back and look solid a real good team effort here looking at some of the kill counts it doesn't seem like complexity should even be in this game that's the the, the thing that's gobsmacking to me you've got uh, 22 kills for floppy this deep 27 for jt and 29 for halzerk everybody on astralis is over 30 at this juncture so when you start to really add up the X's and the O's, obviously a few extra saves here, there, and everywhere, but there's just certain situations where Astralis should have been destined to convert and haven't got across the line. Another round where Glaive has to try and call his way out of this hell. Yeah, this is a must-win round. Otherwise, we are going to dust two. Win it, and uh, we're just going to quarter overtime. But you didn't think we'd be saying that today. So in terms of map control, They've been granted access towards lower in the form of secret, but Floppy, he's down there once again. He'll be smoking them off. It all comes to a standstill. Not for long, though. Grim wants that third. He's been great at the hut fight. He's done it again. And this time it will be the opening for complexity here. Halzerk, he's gone for a looky loo. Glaive is down towards the secret position. They have to have a good idea that someone is down here. He is going to get flanked any second now. It just needs to be stalled out for a moment longer. Floppy just needs to survive. Glaive's going to try and make up the vent. They have to top split. They have to try and top split up the ladder. How's he been able to juke two of them? Grim on notice now towards the A site. I'm sure JT not too far behind, but Grim might do it on his own. Up the ladder they come. This is locked out. Blame. A one on five situation required. Here's 15 seconds left on the clock. No hope. No oh. prayer. Dust two, Henry. It's coming. I think he might be right. And there it is. Complexity have done.